Everybody, we've had iPadOS 18 installed on this M4 iPad Pro for a couple days now, and we've been able to kind of see some other new features that went unannounced during Apple's keynote. So in this video, what I want to talk about is 20 of those features that went under the radar that are actually extremely beneficial for your day-to-day -day use with something like this M4 iPad Pro. So without further ado, let's get into this video and talk about everything that we learned so far. Well, alright everyone, let's get right into this video and I will have timestamps down below for all the different things that I do mention. These are just things that I found that I think everybody should know about when it comes to iPadOS 18 specifically. But let's start off with the actual lock screen. So if I go in and create a new lock screen, the first thing you're going to notice is if you scroll all the way down, we do have some new iPadOS 18 wallpapers. So these wallpapers will be on any single iPad that goes on iPadOS 18. And you can see we have a couple different gradients. We have green, blue, purple, as well as indigo. And then the second thing on the actual lock screen is when you do go in here to customize the actual time when it comes to font and things like that, we actually got a new gradient, which is this cool rainbow gradient, which is something we didn't have before. So that's all brand new for the lock screen customization. And again, the more the merrier when it comes to stuff like this. So this next feature is gonna have to do with the new passwords app. So if I open this up, you get a new option on here. So with 17, I believe 17.4, Apple gave us the ability to see our actual Wi-Fi passwords in the settings. And now with iPadOS 18, if you go into your Wi-Fi, go into your Wi-Fi settings, you can actually share your Wi-Fi via a QR code. So if you scan that QR code, I'm gonna blank it out so you guys can't just log into my Wi-Fi, but you're able to have somebody scan that QR code to then sign on to your Wi-Fi without actually having to share any password or anything like that. So I like that ability to be able to do that. And then to continue on with the home screen, I have some applications on here. And what's nice about this is that Apple, after about 17, 18 years, allowed two things with the applications. So first and foremost, if I long press on any application, you have the ability to press require face ID. So when you require Face ID, that's exactly what it does. Whenever I want to open something like the YouTube Studio app, it's now going to require Face ID for me to open it. You can see it is trying to pull up the actual YouTube app with Face ID, and you can see that it does work. And then once it does scan your face, you can just open it up, and then it does open up the application. But then the next thing you can do is if I long press that app again, you can require Face ID, but then you can also hide and require Face ID. So let's hide it, it's gonna scan my face. You can hide the application. You can see this is a brand new splash screen. We'll press hide app and you can see the app disappears. And then to find the actual application, it's gonna be in your hidden folder in your app library. And then it shows up right there. And then if I wanna remove it from there, long press again, don't require face ID. It's gone from the hidden folder. And then if I want to, I can just type in YouTube TV. And then I've added a YouTube studio right back into my home screen. Let me know what you guys think about my overall home screen layout, by the way, curious to know your thoughts. Okay, so now let's get into the Notes application. Notes got a bunch of new things, as you can see right here, which are awesome, that really made the Notes application just that much more customizable and that much better. The first one we're gonna talk about is voice notes inside of Notes application. So you no longer have to physically go to the Voice Memo app, you can still go there, but now you can do it directly on here. You tap on this little clipboard right here, you get record audio. First and foremost, of course, you can start a recording and it's gonna record it live, and then when you're done, you press pause, you press done, and then it shows up there as a new recording. And you can see that it is transcripted right there. But if you wanna just do a live transcription, go back in here, go back to record audio, and then press on this little captions button up here, or start recording. And then you can see that instead of having that voice memo kind of sound graph going, you now have it actually captioning for you in real time. And then you can actually use that to actually put into your notes. So we'll press done here. You can see that the transcription is there. Yes, it is overlapping a little bit. Again, we're on beta one, so I'm sure all the UI stuff will get fixed, but at least you know that you can get voice memos and live voice transcription built into the Notes app. And then to continue on with the Notes app, you might notice that it says collapsing header here. I actually wrote that, but you have this little carrot right here. So if I tap on that carrot, you can see that it is a collapsible header. So the way to do this, I wish it was a little bit more obvious on how to do it. All you have to do is type something out. So I'll just type out header. And then if I highlight this, you actually go into this formatting section right here and turn it into a heading. And then when you turn it into a heading, then it automatically has that option. So if I press return, type in hello, you can see that after we made it a header, the little carrot shows up and now you have a collapsible list, which just helps with overall organization when it comes to the notes application, which is gonna be great. And then the last formatting piece to consider in the notes app is if I highlight something, you're able to then actually highlight it in different colors. If I go back to formatting, you actually have the ability to highlight it in all these different colors right here. Let's highlight it in mint, change up the actual font itself. So I think this actually works great as you can see right there all brand new things that came to the notes application on your iPad. Okay, so the next feature is all about the files application. So if I go into the files application, and also let me know what you guys think about the new dark kind of form factor and dark colorway that you get with the new kind of customization of the icons. But we already mentioned that in the past video, which I'll link down below if you guys wanna check that out. 
But if you go into the Files app, a lot of people were a little bit upset because we didn't get too much change in the Files app. But one of the most important things we did get, which went under the radar, is that we could actually save things offline and then keep them downloaded. So obviously you have your On My iPad section, which means whatever's on your iPad section will be readily available and doesn't need to download anything from the cloud. But if you are somebody that uses iCloud a lot, one of the worst things about iCloud, especially when you have an iPad with no data, is that it kind of pushes everything smartly or intelligently off of the cloud so it doesn't take up too much storage on your iPad itself. But now you can manually change it because before it could only be smartly done. So here, these are all wallpapers that I had before. Shout out Tom from Byte Review. If I long press on a file, you now get a new option called Keep Downloaded. So if I press Keep Downloaded here, it's gonna download that wallpaper for me. And now no matter what, this file will always be downloaded on my iPad, even though it is technically in iCloud. So that's something where you can force an actual file to stay downloaded, even though it's saved on the iCloud, which I absolutely think is incredible on the Files app. And now next, let's go to the home screen again. So if we long press on here and go into wiggle slash jiggle mode, leave a comment down below if it's wiggle or jiggle, but you start to notice that we do have these little kind of notches down here on the bottom right of all these widgets. And what this allows you to do is resize the widgets in real time. So let's do one in a new screen here, edit, we'll add a widget. Let's add, let's say something like the news widget on here. Let's add it right here. So what this toggle allows you to do is to resize it in real time on your home screen, and then it changes to the actual size itself. So if I grab it again, make it bigger, I can do that. I believe I can go even bigger, I guess not with this one, but something like an extra large widget will allow you to do that. I just think it's a nice little quick way to customize your actual widgets on your home screen and it's very adaptable. And then same thing applies for the actual control center. So if we swipe down on control center, you see that this is a brand new section of control center. This is all new stuff, which is awesome to see. But if you press this little plus button up here, the same little notch shows up for all your different widgets. So for instance, if I wanna make this camera widget smaller, I can make it smaller. If I wanna make the stage manager one bigger, I can make it bigger. Same thing with the notes app for quick notes. So these are all things that you can do and just make them quick and small and easy to access whenever you need to. And then you can see that stage manager is here. I'll delete it, move back up. And then if I wanna add it, I could just press add control center, go in here, type in stage manager, tap it and then it's right back here and I can make it bigger again. So just easy ways to customize your control center in real time without having to take up too much time. And then the third thing with control center is you can actually power off your entire iPad with this button right here. Obviously you can still power off your iPad or your iDevice by holding the lock button and one of the volume buttons, but now you have a quick toggle access to actually power it off if that's something that you wanna get into. So another iPadOS exclusive kind of feature is going to be in the nav bar. So I'm gonna use the news app as an example because it's not on every single actual application quite yet, but developers will have the opportunity to use this new nav bar up here to then customize how you navigate things. So you can see that this is a brand new nav bar. If I press on here, you can see that it moves that nav bar and kind of opens it up a little bit more, and you can switch back to that nav bar. But what's nice about it is that you can customize it. So if I long press, but it does allow you to customize it as you see fit. So this will be able to be used on all the different applications. Like I mentioned right now, it's really only available on the news app. It's not even available on the Apple TV app, which is one that they demoed with during the WWDC keynote, but that is brand new to iPadOS. And then speaking of Apple TV, if you go to the TV app itself, something that I've been personally using, which again, on the iPad is probably not gonna be that big of a deal, but this is more of a big deal on something like tvOS and the Apple TV, is if you go into an actual video and you're watching a movie like this movie right here, if you press on this little button down here, this kind of like this AI looking button, there's the ability to enhance dialogue with boost and enhance. What I will say is that it works extremely well and I'm somebody that really wants this, especially because with some action movies, I feel like action and sound and it works great in a movie theater setting, but when you're at home, the dialogue just seems so quiet without having to turn it up all the way. So being able to boost and enhance dialogue is absolutely amazing. And that's gonna be available on tvOS, which is where I'm gonna be mostly using it. And now let's go to the Photos app. I'm gonna have a complete video on the Photos app, but one thing that I do wanna show off, which is gonna save me so much time, is this brand new feature, or I guess this brand new added feature, which is when you go into edit, what you were able to do before is, let's say I wanna auto this, I wanna go crazy in the exposure, you know, crazy on the highlights, and then when I'm done editing it, I can just tap these three buttons and actually copy those edits. But now you have the ability to do a few more things. So what I'm gonna do here now is actually, let's go here, let's actually crop this a little bit, and then if I press these three dots and press copy edits, you now have the option to select what part of the edit you wanna actually copy. So you can actually include the adjustments, the aspect ratio, and then be adaptive. The brand new part about this is the aspect ratio and being able to crop. Before, you weren't able to actually pass over and copy the actual crop if you were cropping the same image over and over again. You were able to copy the edits and those variables, but never the crop. So this is gonna save people a ton of time if they're constantly cropping the same image and they wanna do it all at once. 
And then to continue on with the Photos app real quick, they did add a bunch of new utility settings. So of course this is a brand new UI, and it does take a little while to get used to because it's just one page now, which is a little bit interesting. But if you go into your utilities, you now have all of these different categories like hidden, duplicates, but now you have things like receipt and handwriting and illustration and QR code. So I love how this is broken down into categories and you can you know go on here and see all these different receipts that I have. So I love that I'm able to just go in here, click on this and then be able to find the receipts that I've taken instead of fumbling through like 10,000 photos that I have in my library. So just a few more settings that I wanna show off. So the next one is gonna be in HealthKit. So HealthKit came over or the Health app came over last year on iPadOS 17 which is one of my favorite things that they were able to do, but now you can actually edit and pin your kind of favorite health cards on the top. So you can see that I have my activity, my heart rate and my steps pinned on here, but if I wanna pin active energy, I can do that. And then you can see that they're all pinned right here and they'll be kind of at the forefront whenever you open up the health kit app. So a little more customization on the health side for iPadOS 18. Another quick visual thing that was added in the settings app, yes, the whole settings app got a rehaul in terms of where everything is. As you can see, I spoke about this in the last video, so definitely check that one out. But now each one of these kind of categories has this big header on top, which lets you know exactly what you're looking at and what's gonna be in this section of settings. So I like this new addition in the settings app. And if you go a little deeper into the settings app and go into your iCloud, I actually love this brand new look right here. So this kind of breaks everything down a little bit more neatly, makes it a little bit more visually pleasing. And you're able to see everything that's kind of around here and you're able to see what's going on from an iCloud perspective. Like for instance, you see that I have 28,700 photos in my iCloud, and I'm kind of nearing that two terabyte limit, which again, I'm gonna have to go in here and kind of clean all this stuff before I get to that two terabytes, but I love this new iCloud look to be able to organize everything and get everything at a glance. And then the final setting that I wanna bring up is going to have to be in gaming, which is the new game mode. So if we type in Retro Bowl right here, which is one of my favorite games, you can see that a game mode is immediately turned on by default, and you can touch it and turn it off and on. And if you go into your control center, you're able to see the Retro Bowl game mode. You can tap on that, and then it lets you know exactly what it's doing. So here it says, when game mode is on, background activity is paused to optimize the performance of this game. And now for this game in particular, you don't really need all that frame rate stuff, and you don't really need a bunch of optimizations. But I can see this being very useful for something like a first-person shooting game or something maybe like NBA 2K from Apple Arcade. So that is something to take into consideration when playing your games on your iPad, which is something that I tend to do a lot. But... Those are 20 features that I wanted to show off. Definitely leave a comment down below if you learned something or if there's something that you want to pick up or something that you're excited to use on iPadOS 18. And most of these do actually correlate with iOS 18 as well. So take that into account, but let's finish up this video. So as you might've seen in this video, there's a bunch of quality of life features that were installed on iPadOS 18. Yes, we didn't get a bunch of shiny new things aside from maybe the math notes and maybe smart scribe and things like that, but there are a lot of tangible features that we're still learning about on iPadOS 18. And this is just the first beta. So as new betas get released, as we get closer to that September release, I'm sure Apple's gonna refine stuff, give us even more features that are gonna go even more under the radar that we'll definitely touch on in a future video. So, so if you guys made it to the end of this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys installed iPadOS 18, what's your favorite feature that Apple didn't announce and that wasn't one of those shiny big features from the Apple keynote? Let me know with a comment down below. But if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace. What are your final thoughts on iPadOS 18? Does it make it worth the upgrade to the M4 iPad Pro? I don't know.